Hello, I'm David Hardesty, and in this lecture we begin our discussion of website development costs. This initial lecture on the topic focuses on the big picture, which is the identification of the categories of cost associated with building websites. In subsequent lectures, we will focus in more detail on these cost categor categories. This lecture and this unit concentrate on the costs associated with building websites. In subsequent units, we will look at the accounting for costs associated with acquiring websites. The objectives of this lecture are to identify the different categories of costs associated with building websites and develop an understanding of how these cost categories relate to each other from a tax accounting point of view. The reading in electronic commerce taxation and planning associated with this lecture is at um, paragraph 7.01. Here is the big picture. Although many tax practitioners look at the cost of building websites as a single number to be accounted for under one set of rules, this is not the case. Many categories of cost go into building websites and these costs are accounted for under a variety of different rules. In this lecture and in this unit, we will focus on the following categories of cost, which make up the bulk of costs associ associated with building websites. Capital expenditures under Section 263. Ordinary and necessary business expenses under Section 162. Startup costs under Section 195. Research and experimentation costs under Section 174. Software development costs under Revenue Procedure 2050. Here's an example of website costs falling into different categories. Hold'em Up is a company that sells all kinds of exotic belts and suspenders in retail stores. To expand its customer base, it starts a website. Initially, the website carries only a catalog of products and a phone number to call for orders. This website only delivers information to the customers and we will characterize it as an information website. In general, the function performed by the website is to advertise products. Based on this analysis of the site's functions, we can probably conclude that all of the costs associated with creating the site are advertising costs that are currently deductible. However, what if the website also incorporates software that allows it to take orders from customers? Now, it performs functions of an e-commerce website. The cost of the software cannot fairly be called advertising cost. As we will see, if the software was purchased, it will be capitalized under Section 263. And if it was developed, then it may be currently deducted under Revenue Procedure 2050 or under section 174. There is a specific sequence in the decision making employed to classify website development costs. This sequence is as follows. Identify costs that are accounted for under section 174. Section 174 overrides Sections 162, 195, and 263. Under Section 174, the taxpayer elects to either deduct or capitalize 
these costs. Identify software development costs that are not subject to Section 174, but which are subject to the special rules of Revenue Procedure 2050. This rule permits the taxpayer to either deduct or capitalize these costs, but this rule does not override the requirement of Section 195 to defer otherwise deductible costs. Identify website content as either content that must be capitalized and amortized or content that is currently deductible, such as content with a useful life of less than 12 months or currently deductible advertising content. Identify other costs that must be capitalized under Section 263. Identify currently deductible costs accounted for under Section 163, interest expense, or Section 164, taxes. Identify costs deducted under 162. Determine whether the entity is subject to Section 195. If so, then defer under Section 195 any previously identified Section 162 costs. Identify Section 174 costs that qualify for the Research and Experimentation Tax Credit. Here's an example of the sequence of classification. Hold'em Up spends $250,000 to build the e-commerce website mentioned above. Here is how we sequence the costs. Assume none of the software in the site is innovative, so Section 174, Research and Experimentation, does not apply. Also assume the company did not create any of its own software, so the rules for software development under Revenue Procedure 2050 do not apply. All of the website content is advertising, so none of it has to be capitalized. All of the website software was purchased off the shelf and installed by an independent contractor. The installed cost of the software is capitalized, and a portion is currently deductible under the rules for amortization of software. None of the costs are interest or taxes. The remaining costs are Section 162 costs, which are currently deductible because the company is not a startup company subject to Section 195. We will go into more specifics regarding cost classification and the relationship between the different rules for cost, classifying costs. However, here are a few key points. Let's start with some key points on Section 174. We will work on building a definition of Section 174, Research and Experimentation Costs, in a later lecture. An important point for now, however, is many software development costs incurred in the building of websites will qualify as Section 174 costs, but not all of these costs will qualify. Another key point. Where the taxpayer elects to deduct Section 174 costs, that deduction will be allowed currently even if the entity is a startup company subject to Section 195. Here's an example of Section 174 costs. Assume that Hold'em Up spends $1 million to develop website software that predicts what a shopper will want and display that item to the shopper. 
The software also predicts the maximum amount the buyer is willing to pay for the item and displays that price to the buyer. The algorithms that make up the software were created by company employees and are so innovative that they are patentable. The entire $1 million will qualify as Section 174 Research and Experimentation Cost. As noted earlier, some software development costs qualify as research costs, but not all. Software development costs that are not research costs can ordinarily be accounted for under Revenue Procedure 2050, which gives the taxpayer the option to either capitalize or deduct such costs. Where the taxpayer elects to deduct software development costs, that deduction will be allowed currently, but not if the entity is a startup company subject to Section 195. In this latter case, such costs are Section 162 costs that must be deferred. Here's an example of Revenue, revenue Procedure 2050 costs. Instead of purchasing software to process orders in his website, Hold'em Up uses one of its employees to create the software. It eventually cost $25,000 to create the software that the company could have purchased off the shelf for $10,000. The software is not innovative and does not qualify under Section 174 as research and experimentation. However, the cost does represent software development, and the company can elect to deduct the cost under Revenue Procedure 2050. Differentiating between 162 and 263 costs is a key issue for companies building websites. Classification is usually based on court cases. However, the classification of intangibles as either 162 or 263 costs is based on an extensive set of regulations. The regulations for intangibles will be important for our discussion because many website costs are intangibles, such as software and copyright content. Now let's tur turn to some key points regarding website content. Website content is an intangible that is capitalized or deducted based on the general rules of Section 162, 263, and the intangibles regulations. However, advertising content is ordinarily currently deductible. A key point is website content is not software and is not subject to the rules of Section 174 or Revenue Procedure 2050. Here's an example of website content. In the Hold'em Up website, all of the pictures of products and all of the written information about products is website content classified as advertising. This content is not software. The way we know it is not software is the pictures and text do not cause anything to happen. That is, the pictures and text are not themselves instructions to the website to perform a function. Instead, the website software, which the user of the website cannot see, causes the pictures and text to be displayed. Costs that are otherwise deductible under Section 162 may require deferral under Section 195. 
Section 195 says that costs otherwise deductible under Section 162 must be deferred and amortized. Under Section 195, if they are costs incurred during the startup period. Section 195 applies primarily to costs otherwise deductible under Section 162. It does not apply to Section 174 costs, so research costs can be deductible even during the startup period. Here's an example of the operation of Section 195. Let's assume for now that the Hold'em Up website was created in a new corporation, partly owned by Hold'em Up and partly owned by unrelated investors. Let us also assume that the period during which the website is created is a startup period subject to Section 195. If, after categorizing all of the costs, we are left with Section 162 costs, these costs will be subject to deferral and amortization under Section 195. Moreover, if the company elects to deduct software development costs under Revenue Procedure 2050, these costs will be Section 162 costs, also subject to deferral under Section 195. Our final topic in this initial lecture uh, is the Research and Experimentation Tax Credit. Some website software costs are Section 174 costs that qualify as research and experimentation costs for purposes of the Research and Experimentation Tax Credit. This will be the subject of a later lecture. In addition, costs associated with some other non-software-related technology developed for websites qualifies as Section 174 costs eligible for the credit. A key thing to know right now is, while a cost qualifying for the credit must be a Section 174 cost, not all Section 174 costs qualify for the credit. Here is an example of the r &E tax credit. In an earlier example, we discussed the creation of innovative software that predicts buyer behavior and which is patentable. The cost of this software qualifies as Section 174 costs. Does the cost also qualify for the Research and Experimentation Tax Credit? Possibly. Qualification under Section 174 is one of the requirements for the credit. However, there are a number of other criteria that must be met, which we will discuss in a later lecture. Without knowing more about the software, we cannot say that it will qualify.